hey guys, the last Rugby Union Internationals of the year are fast upon us, so I think it's a good time for me to do my Team of the Year 2018. Now, I'm going to do this for a bit of fun. Please remember that this is just my opinion based on what I've seen this year of uh, who I think is the best 1-15 to 15 of 2018. Obviously, everyone will have slightly different opinions. That's absolutely fine. Um, you can feel free to express yours in the comments. Uh, I have no problem with that, but I'm just going to go off my opinion here. And I will also be doing who I think deserves to win the Rugby Union Player of the Year 2018 award. But we're going to start off by going into the team. At fullback, I have picked Rob Carney of Ireland and Leinster. Definitely back to his best this year after the last couple of years. I think he's gone off a wee bit. Actually, last year, I remember saying that I thought he was past his best. But he's definitely proved me wrong this year. He's been exceptional under the high ball. Very solid in defence for Ireland. Contributed really well to their attacking plays. And I think he's definitely been the most consistent fullback of the year of all the nations most notable performances definitely were in all the entire six nations he was very consistent very reliable and against New Zealand last Saturday he was exceptional as well and as good as anyone who was in the, an Ireland jersey last Saturday so he is my fullback on the right wing I have gone for Rico Luani of New Zealand and the Blues, the joint tops try scorer of the 2018 Rugby Championship. He's been a devastating runner, great stepper, very strong as well. Um, he's played on the left wing mainly, but to me, uh, I put him on the right wing because I the two best wingers of the year for me were both left wingers. I'll get into the other one a bit later on, but uh, I had to settle for Rico Ioni going on the right wing. Always been a massive problem for teams that have been playing against him, so that's going to be my right winger, is Rico Ioni. At 13, this was a very difficult one, um, because there have been a few candidates out there. Um, there's obviously in the Six Nations, there was... The likes of Rob Robbie Henshaw, Gary Ringrose, uh, Matteo Bastaro, also Hugh Jones of Scotland, who played very well as well. But I have gone for Ryan Crotty of New Zealand and Crusaders, who's been in excellent form for the Crusaders and the Super Rugby, and also with New Zealand as well. When he's played, he's been out a couple of times this year because of concussions, which he's been very unlucky with. But for me, when he's played, he's been absolutely excellent for New Zealand. I think he's a very underrated centre. He does the basics so well. He makes the yards, makes the tackles, reads the game really well. He reminds me of Conrad Smith a bit in the way he plays the game and how he reads the game. He's not the flashiest of centres. He doesn't command attention the way the likes of a Maha Nonu or a old Sonny Bill Williams used to. I mean, Sonny Bill Williams when he was good. So that's why I have gone for Ryan Croy at 13 because I just think he's when he's played, he's played very well. He's been consistent and he's given defenders problems. He's defended well himself and I think he has been the best 13 of 2018. What are your thoughts there? At inside centre, number 12, I've gone for Bundiaki of Ireland and Connacht. He's been absolutely fantastic for Ireland this year. A real great acquisition. Obviously, New Zealand born, qualified for Ireland on three year residency rule. I think New Zealand have missed a bit of a trick there by letting him go to Ireland, but it is what it is now. He's an Irish player and he has been brilliant for Ireland this year. He's carried very strongly, strong tackler, reads the game well in defence. Um, and obviously, like I said, a great ball carrier. He was fantastic last Saturday uh, against New Zealand. So I think he's been definitely been the best 12, in my opinion, this year. That was a pretty easy choice. So at number 12, Bundiaki. At number 11, I've gone for Jacob Stockdale, the 2018 Six Nations Player of the Championship. Top try scorer of the 2018 Six Nations Championship. Scored a brilliant try against New Zealand last Saturday. He has been an absolute stormer on the wing. He's been fantastic scoring tries, causing defences loads of problems with his pace and his strength, his step, his handoffs as well. He's 
got it all. I think he's going to be a he was a really good choice for Joe Schmidt to bring him into the Ireland team, even at a very young age, and he's got a big future ahead of him, I think. So Jacob Stockdale, my number eleven. At number 10, this came down to between two players, between Bowden Barrett and Jonathan Sexton. I have given the nods to Johnny Sexton of Ireland and Leinster based on consistency alone and the fact of the way he can control a game and the way he has controlled games under pressure for both club and country. Bowden Barrett is obviously a fantastic attack in 10. He had a brilliant rugby championship bar his goal kicking against South Africa. He scored four tries against Australia. He was absolutely fantastic in that game. The thing is with him, I think when New Zealand have been under pressure, he struggles a bit more to control games and steady the ship a bit more. Whereas Jonathan Sexton, for the most part for Ireland, has, when Ireland have been under pressure or have needed him to dig him out, he's been instrumental for them. And he's also been instrumental for Leinster as well in their uh, Champions Cup win. And his drop goal against um, France in the opening game of the Six Nation, I think, has really set the tone for his year. He's been absolutely fantastic, reads the game well, controls the game well, knows when to run, knows when to pass, knows when to kick. He's been the best 10 of the year, in my opinion. I think with uh, Bowden Barrett, he's a fantastic attacker, like say, but he lacks that ability Dan Carter had to be able to control games under pressure and steady the ship when things aren't going so well. I think that's what New Zealand are missing at the moment from him. No doubt, like I think Bowen Barrett should obviously still be in the start of New Zealand team, but maybe as a fullback going forward, we'll see what happens there. But anyway, I have gone for Jonathan Sexton as my number 10. At number 9, there were a few candidates for this role, most notably Faf de Klerk of South Africa, who's one of the nominees for Player of the Year as well. But again, this is me going off my opinion, and my personal choice is Connor Murray, who is the best number 9 in the world now, in my opinion. Has had an absolutely superb Six Nations, was superb in Ireland's Test Series win over Australia. He is absolutely world class and he has it all in my opinion he can run he can pass he can kick he reads the game absolutely superbly he tackles when he needs to has an absolutely lightning pass now which i'd say is at the very least on par with aaron smith's speed of pass and he in the last few years i think is now the complete scrum half and to me his performances in the six nation at six nations and down in australia were enough to justify the nine spot for me i know he's injured just now but he will be a big player for ireland next year when he comes back so that's the back selected um that's the back line there on your screen and um, just feel free to comment and let me know what you think and what your choices would be Okay, on to the forwards now. At loose head prop, this was a toughish one to pick, but I've given the nod to Keen Healy, who for me has been the most consistent loose head all year um, for both club and country. And to me, he deserves the one spot. He's played a good part in their Grand Slam, as well as the win against New Zealand last Saturday. He was as good as anyone uh, for Ireland that day. So that is my pick for loose head prop. At Hooker, um, this to me was a call between two players. Uh, it was either between Guillaume Garado of France or Malcolm Marks of South Africa. I've gone for Malcolm Mar Marks of South Africa and the Lions, uh, the Super Rugby Lions, not the British Lions, obviously. But he just he just gets the nod because he's been very consistent for South Africa. He's been I uh, played a huge part in South Africa's resurgence this year. He's been solid in his line out throwing, does the donkey work you expect of a forwards, carries well, one of the nominees for player of twenty eighteen. So I have gone for Malcolm Marks there. At number three at tight head prop, I have gone 
for Tag Furlong of Ireland. This guy just seems to keep getting better and better. And I would put a case forward. This might upset a few New Zealanders, but I would put a case forward for him being a bit better than Owen Franks just now, which is a massive compliment in itself. Just how good he, he scrums, he carries, he does his work at the breakdown like any forward needs to do. So consistent for Ireland in their Grand Slam year. Again, I've said that about a lot of Irish picks. I think he definitely deserves the tight head prop jersey. So that is Tad Furlong for number three. And number four, going into the second row now, I've gone for Brody Retallick, who is, in my opinion, the best lock in the world. He, again, has been very consistent for New Zealand this year. He has carried well. He's offloaded well. He has basically the athleticism and size of a second row, but the hands and feet of a back showed again this year why he is the best lock in the world also in the line outs he's been very destructive of opposition ball as well as being good on his own ball as well so yeah Brody Retallick is number four number five uh, just based on his consistency and what he does around the field it's Alan jones at number five he just shows how good he is how hard he works for both Wales and the Ospreys even when on the whole, those teams aren't playing very well. He just always stands out. If you know anything about rugby, you'll know just watching Alamon Jones is at almost every breakdown. He makes the tackles when needed and he carries and uh, makes ground when needed. Does a lot of the unseen work or the underappreciated works at the breakdown in terms of his rucking, in terms of uh, slowing opposition's ball down, in terms of ensuring security on his own ball. He's just got an unbelievable engine on him. I think definitely Wales' best player at the minute. He's definitely not slowing down now. Is he 33 now? He's not slowing down at all. He's got an unbelievable work rate, unbelievable engine. I thought last year he was another one who was getting a bit past it before the Lions tour, of course, but... He's, again, come back, bounced back, showing what an excellent player he is, and he is vital to Wales going into the next World Cup. And number six, blindside flanker. To me, this was no contest. Peter O'Mani of Ireland and of Munster. He's been absolutely outstanding all, all, all year. Great athleticism, great line-out operator, great at the breakdown, great carrier as well, great support player. Uh, the guy's just been absolutely fantastic, and to me, he definitely deserves the sixth shirt, so there's no questions there. He's been the most consistent six this year. Peter Romani at six. At number seven, this was a tough choice, as there were a few candidates. Um, most notably, Saya Khaleesi, Sam Kane, Justin Tipperick of Wales has been great, Dad Levy of Ireland also been great. So has Hamish Watson of Scotland, and I've... Decided, I'll be honest, I've decided to be a bit biased here and I've gone for Hamish Watson as my seven because he's been perhaps uh, Scotland's most consistent performer this year. Uh, a small, stocky, uh, nifty player at seven. Gets around, he loves contact, loves carrying hard, loves getting turnovers where he can. Uh, his best performance of the year, I think, was against England where he was all over them at the breakdown. He has just been brilliant in his all-round play. He's never let us down this year. Even when, you know, our performances as a whole team haven't been necessarily good, he's still, you know, stood out and given his all. And so I have gone for Hamish Watson at seven. You can call me biased there if you want, but this is my video, so that is who I am going for. <laughs> And number eight, again, this was a toughish choice. I had narrowed it down to David Pocock of Australia or CJ Stander of Ireland. I've gone for David Pocock. He has proven himself again and again just how much of a brilliant jackaler he is, how much of a nuisance he is for the opposition at the breakdown, how hard he works around the field, how, how he carries well as well, how athletic he he is. He's definitely been Australia's shining light in what's been a pretty bad year for them, let's be honest. And he's playing in a mostly bad team, so I think he gets the nod for me because of just how much he contributes to them. And to be honest, without him, I think they would be losing by a lot more than the losses they have been getting this year. So that is my pick at number eight, David Pocock. So that was my start in 15. Now I'm going to go on to the player of the year, uh, which is announced by World Rugby next week officially. So I'm going to go and just say here is my player of the year. And it is 
Ireland, number 10, Jonathan Sexton. I think just in terms of how consistent he's been, how instrumental he's been for Ireland and all the stuff I've said before about him, I think he definitely deserves the nod uh, for Player of the Year. Let me know your thoughts there. I think also you can uh, gauge that uh, Ireland is my team of the year uh, based on how many Irish players I picked in the uh, team of the in the um, World 15 of the year, pardon me. And I'd have Joe Smith as the coach of the year, no question about that. I mean, a Grand Slam, a series win in Australia and beating the All Blacks, can't get much better than that, can you? Again, guys, uh, a lot of this is subjective. It's just my opinion. Others might see differently, no doubt they will. But feel free to comment below your thoughts, let me know what you think, like, comment, subscribe, thank you for watching, and I will catch you later on.